Hi, fourth grade. Today's math lesson is a lesson 12.9. It is page 479 in the Go Math book. Problem solving elapsed time. Essential question, how can you use the strategy draw a diagram to solve elapsed time problems? Now you might be saying to yourself right now, what is elapsed time, Mrs. Drawn? Well, elapsed time is how much time goes by from one time to another. It is the time that goes by while some event is happening. Now, today we're going to use a number line to find either the start or the end time of an event, given one of those times and how much time has elapsed or gone by. So depending on the type of problem, we may jump backward on the number line, we may jump forward on the number line. So please read the problems carefully. Please also pay attention to whether the time is a.m. or p.m. So once again, page 479 in the Go Math book. Taking a look at Unlock the Problem Real World. Dora and her brother, Kyle, spent one hour and 35 minutes doing yard work. So that is an example of the elapsed time, how much time went by while they were doing the yard work. Then they stopped for lunch at 1.20 p.m. At what time did they start doing yard work? So here we know elapsed time, one hour and 35 minutes went by, and we know the end time. So at what time did they start doing yard work means that we have to figure out what was the start time to their yard work. So we're really gonna break this down and look at it carefully. So what do I need to find? I need to find the time that Dora and Kyle started doing yard work. Next, what information do I need to use? I need to use the elapsed time. One hour, 35 minutes. And the time that they stopped for lunch. One twenty p.m. Remember, I said it was important to do to pay attention to a.m. or p.m. Now, how will I use the information? So our strategy is going to be to draw a timeline to help me count backward and find the start time. So here's one of those examples of using the timeline and counting backward. So our hops are going to go back until we get to the start time. So to solve the problem, I draw a timeline that shows the end time, 1.20 p.m. Next, I count backward. Now, when you're thinking about time, try to take some big jumps if you can. So they suggest we jump one hour back and then five minutes at a time until I have 35 minutes. So on this timeline, you could see we jump back from 120 to 1220, and then five minutes at a time. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So when we do that, we have marked on our timeline some pretty significant times. So 1.20, we have one minute, one o'clock, 12.30, 12 o'clock noon, and 11.45 a.m. So looking at the fact that we jump back one hour and 35 minutes, that puts us at a start time of 11.45 a.m. 
So Dora and her brother, Kyle, started doing yard work at 11.45 a.m. So this was really nice because they had everything laid out for us. So when you're making your timelines, just be careful and realize, you know, you could take some big jumps first, but then you're gonna have to break it down into some smaller jumps. So let's look at number one. What if Dora and Kyle spent 50 minutes doing yard work? And they stopped for lunch at 12.30. What time would they have started doing yard work? So instead of the end time being here, end time is here. So the end time was at 1230 and they spent 50 minutes doing yard work. So we can still use the same number line. We can still count by fives. So if we started here, I'm sorry, end, we're jumping back to go to the start, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50 means that they would have started doing yard work at 11, 11, 40, a M. All right, let's go see what our next problem is on page 480. So we're going to try another problem. Ben started riding his bike at 10.05 a.m. So this is going to look a little different because now we have start time. He stopped 23 minutes later. So in this case, we have start and our elapsed is 23 minutes. So he stopped 23 minutes later when his friend Robbie asked him to play kickball. kickball. At what time did Ben stop riding his bike? So now if we got the start, we're going to jump forward to get to the stop. And it's 10.05 a.m., so pay attention to that as well. So what do I need to find? I need to find at what time did Ben stop riding his bike? What information do I need to use? I need to use the elapsed time. Twenty three minutes and start time ten o five AM. So how will I use the information? Well, we're going to draw a timeline. I can draw a timeline to help. Count forward and find the end time. So now we need to solve the problem. So again, they're so kind to us. They have already given us a timeline. So we need to think about what's gonna be our smart jumps here. Because we have, we know we're starting at 10.05, so we know that. 23 minutes. So we could go by fives, because they've labeled our number line beautifully for that. So 
23 means we're only going to take a few jumps of five minutes and then we'll have to do a few single minutes. So we're going to jump by fives. Five, 10, 15, oops, 20, but it's 23 minutes. So 21, 22, 23. So looking at our timeline, this is 25, this is 26, 27, 10, 28 a.m. Ben stopped riding his bike. Awesome. So how did your diagram help you solve the problem? Well, instead of trying to do this in my head, I can be very, very sure that I'm doing the correct elapsed time. So first of all, the number line helps me count by five minute jumps. and one minute jumps confidently. And I'm not taking guesses because I can see for sure what is going on. All right, so let's do some more of these. I think these are fun. I love thinking about how things should work and what should we do to solve problems. So, on Sharon Show, on page 481, here are some tips to unlock the problem. Use the problem solving math board, choose a strategy you know, and underline important facts. So number one, Evelyn has dance class every Saturday. It lasts one hour and 15 minutes that is the elapsed time and is over at 12.45 p.m. End time. At what time does Evelyn's dance class begin? So, folks, this is like the first one we've practiced. We have the end time and we have the elapsed time. So we're going to be jumping backwards on the timeline. So first, we're going to write the problem that we need to solve. So at what time does Evelyn's dance class begin? Next, draw a timeline to show the end time and the elapsed time. So we need to add, be a good idea to add a few times to this, just to make life a little bit easier. So we can add, we've got 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock. So we could probably give it a 1230. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, just as a guideline. We probably could give 1130 as well, just so we know you know, where that might be. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 11, 30. Just to give us some guidance. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to elapse time is one hour. So ended at 12.45. So 12.30 is here. 35, 40, 45. That's a very important number to keep in mind as well. So it ended at 1245. It was an hour and 15 minutes. So 1245 and we jump back one hour. 
So again, I think it's smart to be putting some numbers on your number line. If this is 1130, 1135, 1140, 1145. So when we jump back one hour from 1245, jump, jump, jump to 1145. So there's an hour and then we still have 15 minutes. So we're gonna jump by fives. So five, 10, 15. Finally, find the start time. Evelyn's dance class begins at 11.30. Make sure you label AM. Awesome. Number two is a hot problem. Woohoo! What if Evelyn's dance class started at 11 AM and lasted one hour and 25 minutes? So now we have a start time and we have the elapsed time, but we don't have the end time. So at what time would her class end? And they want us to describe how the problem is different from problem one. So we have a couple steps here. So we can still use this number line. We're in, instead, because we have a start time and we have the elapsed time, the problem is different in the fact that we're gonna jump forward because we have start time and we have elapsed time and we need end time. So if we're starting at 11 a.m., so here's our starting, and it lasted one hour and 25 minutes. So we have the hour marked. So we're jumping forward one hour, gets us to 12 noon, and our second jump is 25 minutes. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 minutes, and that would be 12, 25 p.m. And 12, 25 p.m. How is this problem different from problem one? We jump forward on the number line. All right, number three. Beth got on the bus, <coughs> excuse me, at 8.06 a.m. 35 minutes later, she arrived at school. At what time did, a Beth, did Beth arrive at school? So we have start, we have elapsed, we need end. So if you remember from our other problems, we're going to be jumping forward. So we're gonna to need to make a number line. It's definitely probably not gonna be as neat as the number lines that the book makes, but that's okay. So, 8.06 is the start time. We're jumping 35 minutes later. So, maybe we jump by tens. So 8.06 would be 8.16. Ten more, so ten twenty, this would be eight twenty six. Thirty would be eight thirty six. So that's jumping thirty minutes. So ten, oops, twenty, thirty minutes, but it's thirty five minutes. So eight thirty six. 37, 1, 838, 2, 39, 3, 840, 4, 841 is five more jumps. So she arrived at school at 841 a.m. All right, so 
you just kind of have to think what makes most sense on your number line. What's going to be the easiest to count? So 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35. Number four, Lyle went fishing for one hour and 30 minutes until he ran out of bait at 6.40 p.m. At what time did Lyle start fishing? So here we go. We've got the elapsed time. We got the finish time. We need the start time. So again, we're jumping backwards on the timeline. So we can do the best with our timeline, like I said. That's all we can do is our best. 6.40. And elapsed time is one hour and 30 minutes. So if we jump back one hour, it's going to be 540. We need to jump back 30 more minutes. So I'd say probably jump back by tens. All right, so... We jump back one hour, but it's an hour and 30 minutes. We have to jump back 30 more minutes. 10, 20, 30. So the Lyle started fishing at 5, 10 p.m. Please label, because this was 6.40 p.m. All right, let's take a look, 4.82. I just feel like the more you practice, the more comfortable comfortable you get with these. We're gonna do number five, and I'm gonna give you some time to set it up and work on it, and then I'll go through it with you and see how it went. So on your own, number five. Mike and Jed went skiing at 10.30 a.m. Start time. They asked for one hour, or they skied, not asked, they skied for one hour and 55 minutes. That's the elapsed time before stopping for lunch. At what time did Mike and Jed stop for lunch? So this is, we're looking for the end time. So you have your show your workspace over here, do your number line, make sure you put your start time do your jump of one hour and 55 minutes and see what time you end up. So I'm gonna give you some time to do that. All right, so maybe not enough time, but let's go ahead and set this up over here in the show your work area. So let's do our number line. Started skiing at 10.30 a.m. Skied for an hour and 55 minutes. So maybe we do 11, 11.30, 12, 12.30. Okay, this is a rough number line. So one hour, 10.30 jumps to 11.30. And 55 minutes. 
We don't have this set up in five minute increments, but 1225, 1225, 1230, 1245, 1250. Okay, 12, 55, just to be careful. All right, so we jump for an hour. Oops, we also need her. So 1130, 1135. 1140, 1145, 1150, 1155, 12. All right, so we jump back our hour and we need 55 minutes. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 55. So we jump back to 55 right here. We're five minutes before 1230, which is 1225 p.m. So they finished, they stopped for lunch at 1225 p.m. So just think about what the problem's asking you. Do they give you the start time and the elapsed time? Then you go forward to get to end time, or do they give you the end time and elapsed time? Then you would jump backward to get to the start time. So let's go ahead and figure out what homework is. Homework is page 237 and 238. And because this is going to be helpful, the more you practice, we're gonna do all of it this time, all of page 237 all at page 238. So read carefully, set up your timelines as carefully as possible, and do the best that you can do. Thank you.